Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the um, April 18th MLCC meeting. Good afternoon. 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 Good we have a nice number of people participating, but it doesn't meet the requirements. So um, we we'll just let it go on and try to approve the minutes and the agenda. And may I just as yes. a reminder that means that next month or the next time we meet, we won't have official minutes for this meeting. We'll just have this an overview synopsis. Oh, okay. Do we get official minutes once we approve that? We'll get this. No, there, that. there's no because there's no quorum. Oh. There's no. There's no minutes. Oh, okay. So like a brief over recording. Yeah, the recording counts as opposed to. Okay. Yeah. All right. We will have a recording that will be posted. All right. So then I guess I'll start with the chair's report. Thank you. It was distributed. Uh, it was on the rails, thankfully. I made that happen. I was hoping that. And of course, the uh, big news was that Coke Department work was finally done. I wrote in my report that when they were my kids when they were younger, it was always a really, really fun event. And the employees were overly nice uh, answering every single question anybody had. And they always said the kids could stay, they just had a locomotive position, and they could sit near the cab and have pictures taken, and they can believe they were operating the train. But uh, the new arrangement doesn't lend itself to um, not having a bet like that anymore. Uh, we did go there. In 2021, I should probably talk about what we want to put this summer. Uh, there aren't very many options. Uh, you know, we'll talk about that later. Uh, if you have any thoughts, let us know and we'll start yeah. that uh, process. Well, I uh, comes to mind quickly is North White Plains. It's not too difficult to think of. I would say, how about maybe Harrison, where they just did the, is that the right place? Where they have a beautiful TOD. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if that yeah. that's easy. We could, I, I, I don't know if it's on the same line, but then we can also, yeah, and right, because then, uh, then there's a, an example of a not beautiful TOD on a different line that we uh, in November and then we found what was it, east or west? Um, I, that was the uh, Mount Vernon West. Mount Vernon that's, West. That's the yeah. 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 We have plenty of time to figure out. Right. Okay. Uh, going to the TOD. I actually was at the kickoff of the TOD. Uh, Harrison TOD and then uh, Davey. Uh, okay, so um, the big news for uh, Western Hudson is that the um, chairman announced the pilot program to get service on weekends on the Haverhill Austin Ferry and the Brickeaton Ferry. And the people that have spoken, to the main wall, I think that's a great idea. I decided I want to put a little bit deeper. And, uh, I was going to be able to have a store that doesn't have that much, but with us saying, what do you have? You have things that us saying, don't you want a water pump? Mm -hmm. Like, there's nothing to do it with. Right? But the, the, the problem is that they didn't include anything for week, the weekdays. And so you have a very limited service in the morning and limited service in the afternoon. So that's. Uh, that's something that still has to be improved and uh, some discounts for the uh, buses going over to Chester um, by the unit ticket, but if you're not going five days a week, you're not buying it on the ticket, it's not that. It puzzled me that they would offer reduced parking at like North White Plain. It's really not an easy place to get. Right? As opposed to just White Plains. As opposed to Tarrytown, which they could make some arrangement with the village, you know, Right. They did it during the, I got them to do it during the pandemic. They offered, they offered, um, they suspended the bus service, ferry service. They, they offered um, that people could park in Irvington, which would then require that they're riding always a local train. And they complained about it. And then they, they decided, okay, they got permission to have a certain number of spots available in uh, Tarrytown. I just for the heck of it, uh, 6 30. In the morning, I did a, a um, Google Maps to see how long it would take to get from Middletown, 
New York to uh, North Lake Plains an hour and 17 minutes. Uh, and uh, from you guys are in a manual way, which is really, for me, only 21 minutes. I was surprised with that little, but fighting the traffic going westbound on the Tappan Zee Bridge and you're in the rush hour, it's not something anyone should want to so I, I wonder where the, the thought was and when, how they decided this is, this is what they want to offer. Maybe that was the, do you think that was an arrangement that they were able to make with um, the county? I don't think the county knew anything about it. They weren't involved. It's not their parking facility? Oh, uh, Westchester County? Yeah. That's a good question. That's a good question. That's a good question. We don't so, get from North Lake Plains, Part 287 is a little bit of a hassle. It's, okay. I mean, it's not a direct connection. No, I, I've done it, but it's, yeah. not, it's not direct. Anyway, it's up to the higher ups to figure out what they want to do. And um, we're still, council is looking at and actively trying to get the uh, Long Island Railroad to go up to uh, allow senior to say that this town's going to keep hours. Well, that's about it on here. If you have any questions, I'm happy to try and answer them. So we'll go to executive director report. Yes. I apologize for being um, tardy today. Uh, Based, you know, if they say you want to make God laugh, tell them, tell them your plans, right? So my intent was to be here early. Um, and then uh, there was the, the, the mask board had their board meeting today where they announced the two finalists for the executive director or executive CEO job, um, included Rich Davey, who's the head of New York City Transit. Um, they, they did it very suspensefully, I think. But waiting to the last minute, it was a big reveal. So, it was a drum um, it, yeah, mm -hmm. and then there's been a lot of build up to that. Rich Davy is supposed to have New York City Transit, um, and he's been here for just over two years. Um, so he's been instrumental in a lot of changes. Um, and you know, big concern that some people have had is what does that mean about the implementation of congestion pricing? And it shouldn't mean anything. Um, because it doesn't just take a village, it takes a city um, you know, to, to put it into place. So we are um, confident that things will go full speed ahead. I I'm absolutely thrilled to introduce Brian Fritch, our new associate director. Yay, Brian. <laughs> Brian, Brian comes to us um, after a, a competitive search. Um, um, uh, and his last uh, gig was at RPA, Regional Planning Association, uh, an organization, a very well-respected organization that's well known to us. Brian, want to say a few words? Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, first of all, uh, very lovely to meet everyone. Um, really excited to be on board at PCAC. Um, I'm in week three of the job now, uh, first day of week three, I guess. Um, and uh, I think I'm uh, really settling in well. Uh, as uh, Lisa mentioned, I spent uh, the last five years at Regional Plan Association, three as a manager of advocacy campaigns running the Build Gateway Now Coalition, Public for Pen Coalition, and some uh, other campaign work for the first three years, and then spent the last two years as communications director for, uh, for RPA. Um, prior to that, I worked on political campaigns for a number of years, uh, both locally in New York City and, and around the country on congressional races. Um, spent a couple of years helping to implement uh, the pre-K program that was uh, the major initiative of the de Blasio administration um, during their first term and have a couple of young kids who are taking advantage of that program now, which is very exciting right. <laughs> uh, uh, to see that come full circle for me uh, and uh, have also worked on some uh, statewide New York State coalitions uh, as well. Um, so yeah, just really excited to be on board at PCAC and looking forward to working with you to, uh, to, to uh, improve uh, MTA for, for all riders. So thank you so much. Since the oldest house that has been in all the years I'm here now. And yeah. 15 years. Yeah. No, it's 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 wonderful. Yeah. Um and Brian has brings with, with his expertise and knowledge of particularly from the Build Gateway um, coalition about uh the uh, the loop and what when that could be built for the Muncie Broad. 
northwest of Hudson, which is great. We joined the Northern Gateway Now Coalition. Yeah, yesterday. Yesterday. I worked on that project with sisters many years ago. Right. So we'll see. Um, uh, I mentioned congestion pricing. There is a hearing on Friday um, that uh, what, from being the audience for. Uh, that's the New York hearing um, to see how things um, how things are going. Hopefully, they're going uh, out the window. That is not. That's the New York City hearing. Um, that of the that's a consolidated New York City hearing. That's, we don't believe the Rockland has any uh, related to the Rockland here. Uh, we staff are uh, continuing to pursue our efforts that didn't make it into the budget. Um, Randy mentioned our senior disabled Medicare uh, eligible discounts in the AMP. I was at a conference last week and had the opportunity to meet with um, the head of the uh, civil service, not civil service, I'm sorry, civil rights office um, who works with USDOT and uh, mentioned this as as a concern, since there should be you know consistency and it's not um it's it seems as a should, as it's a violation of some kind of you know would say right. But uh she said that there's some sort of out of right not having available to the senior care well, and, and and she said that there's going to be that the senior um the senior Fund, the, the funding for the senior passes is going to be fully, that senior passes will be fully funded. And I explained to her that fully, that full funding has heretofore only been required for off peak and doesn't include peak, but that the MTA has included it in their evening peak previously um, and we're fighting for off peak. And they didn't know that. So they thank you for informing them of that. So um, we have some potential other allies. So we'll continue um, on, on that um, track. I will be speaking with you soon. Um, our other efforts include uh, continuing with the um, introduction of the discounted pass, which is being funded through the Avatar Transportation Account, seeing if there is the opportunity to include funding for the the transfers to the subways and buses, uh, as we as these would be a la the Atlantic ticket um, and previous slide, but what would we be fighting for? And also increasing fare fares to two hundred percent of the federal poverty level, and as part of that effort, uh, seeing how we can include funding in the city budget for um, expansion to the um, commuter rails. But a real focus is on uh, increasing to 200%. To that end, Kara and, uh, and, and Jeff and, and the team have worked on an amazing set of maps that show how many more people would benefit from expansion of fair fares from 120% it is now to 200% at the federal poverty level um, and broken it down by council district because it would be city issue, it would be city funding, um, and that's where the budget fight is now. Council speakers indicated that it's a priority of hers. Mm -hmm. So now we just need to get the mayor's ear. We see we see it as a potential weapon in the fight against fair evasion. Certainly, that's not its only um, means or, or role or goal, um, but really for more equitable access to affordable transit. For all. So that continues. Um, and I ran into Joe McDonald and uh, at the conference I was at and reiterated our great need for another member from Rochester. Uh, she said, oh yes. <laughs> so um, they are, the county executive's office uh, is otherwise occupied in several other things at the moment. So, you know, we had spoken about going perhaps to some of the mayors uh, and other electeds uh, to see if there are potential candidates that they would like to recommend to the county executive. So we know that there has been some movement 
in the governor's appointments office um, for the TRC member um, oversight review. So, Francis, do you have any contacts that might be able to um, recommend someone? No, I not really. Um, we want to put you on the spot. I thought maybe. No, no, no. And, and Rosalind too, and, and certainly Walter. Yeah. I mean, with your and your towns and villages. I, I can happily report that I was while well waiting for the northbound one's cramped at 34th Street. You see what the person But by those of us of people, every month yeah, you're you're happy, happy to see that. It's very interesting. I'd be happy to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, does anybody have any questions? Maddie, I see your hand, but are there any questions about my report? Did I miss anything? Oh, no, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. I'm just a little disappointed that the governor's has not proposed, you know, having the MP for reduced fares at a time when I'm when I'm when I'm writing an application to apply for a reduced fare. But I'm hoping we you know, there's still hope we can get this done before. The legislative session, and I do agree with you. We need to have fair fares at two hundred percent. This is one of the richest states in the country, and we should not have people like you know e either choosing transportation or putting food on the table. Thank you, Lisa. Yep. You're right, Maddie. Thank you. Well said. Well said. That's yep. That's our that's our pitch right there. So thank you. Um, any questions? Anything? Okay. Whole business, well, it's uh, I love it. Okay, okay sure. oh, social media. Oh, yes, yes. So, we've uh received questions and concerns from several writers about why the Metro North, or sorry, but why the North Passageway in Grand Central will now be closed between well, okay, between yeah. 9 30 p.m. and 6 30 a.m. on weekdays and entirely on weekends. Some riders are saying this limits transfer opportunities between modes, uh, and others are saying that the 5.30 opening time uh, on the weekdays is just too late for their commute, uh, which I think we heard at the LIRCC meeting last week that that was a much reflective decision. So I'm going to apply to the and ask for a good reason. As much as won't give us a good reason why they're doing it. I'm not sure. I think it's awkward. I think they would want to save. Yeah, it has to be for But we should reach out. I kind of you're already saving money by not taking the timetable. You're already quit saving money by not putting posters in the stations where people can leave the Yeah. Yeah. It's a brand new facility, too. It's kind of a shame. So it's like closing a trap operation. All right, uh, moving on, there have been multiple requests to the Metro North Twitter account asking them to bring back the flag card. Um, and at the very least, for the logic behind not bringing back flag cards post COVID, uh, the, customers, uh, the customer service representative said that they're unable to answer that question uh, and directed them towards the forum. So they were not able to provide their screen, which was a little disappointing. And NG Transit never got the quiet card they have. I don't understand. I'm I guess we'll wait and see. Another writer highlighted that unhoused individuals frequently congregate between uh, track 104 and 114, and also 111 and 114, which is in the same range, I'm now realizing, uh, in Grand Central. And then finally, a writer requested more frequent treatment service on the Hudson line, saying that between uh, hikers and Yankees games, uh, trains have been actually. I would imagine when the legal, the legal, no, no, the speakers don't happen, but the summer. That'd be a lot more bikers as well. So we send them information to uh, the um, I, I have to, so in terms of um, communicating, uh, this morning I have to send a WhatsApp message um, that I usually that I communicate with New York City Transit via WhatsApp. If I see something, there was a guy at my station opening the, the gate for people. That never happens at my station. This is an unusual. Well, it, it never happens that I see. So I went on to WhatsApp and I said, there's a guy holding open the emergency gate and charging people to get in. Nobody's charging people to get in. Yeah. Nobody, nobody, everybody looked at him and went the other way. Not the kind of guy that you want to go near. Um, so I went on to the WhatsApp 
and uh, sent them a message and, and they said, which, you know, what system are you writing about? You know, so I bus, um, well, I'm very much in the north. No. Oh, no. well, you subway, I did, but subway bus. Metro North Atlanta Railroad. It's the first time I've been asked. So I went to Subway and they said, thank you. Uh, now please tell us your question. I said, you need to ask this first before you, you know, this is, if something was happening, it's already happened, that person's dead, right? That, so they need to revamp that and I will be mentioning that this is, if, you know, people are gonna use WhatsApp for situations, then they need to figure that out. It was a very responsive and fast response in the past. Yeah, when you an emergency, would be contacted. What's that? Are you calling that one? Yes. No, I'm not if you're underground. I can't. You, also, you're like, hi, there's a guy next to me who's about to start a fight versus. <laughs> <laughs> they do say on like all the. Everyone, they, they should promote the WhatsApp more because they. it sounds like they just recently integrated it across all the systems, but they haven't promoted that very widely. But they. In all the places that they mentioned the WhatsApp, they do say it's an emergency to call. Right. But, but, but you can't always. And if there's if there's a fight that's escalating, or if there's somebody on the car you don't want to say things out loud to, that's why you don't go over to and push the button to talk on the intercom when there's two people who are about who are talking to each other loudly and about to escalate. Yeah. Uh, yes. You know, and I've already been about using our Twitter account to do things like that. So, <laughs> um, so we'll see, you know, we'll see. I think that's a conversation we can have with that with the WhatsApp folks. Me too. But and, and if um it is gonna be for Metro North, then we should have a conversation about the best ways to use it. A lot of people still don't I was telling people last night you can WhatsApp them to you and a lot of people that's something that we need to have some address on people. Yeah, I'd give that number to everybody. Yeah, it's great. It's my favorite way to contact yeah. them. I tell yeah. them everything. You should come up on the long reservations on the same way like the maps change, like those because you need know. Yeah, well, then you make that suggestion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we got it out. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Hold up. Hold up. Yeah. Richard and Peter, sorry. Sorry, guys. Ask Peter about the I'm sure I'll see you Oh, Rich can tell you. <laughs> right. Um, what, 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 Jack, maybe that is. Um, did you let Richard in? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, Zoom. Oh, there he is. Oh, there's oh, Peter. Oh, 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 Peter. Hey. Hi. What? You were trying to get involved in well, you're there and you're here. You're here. Oh, it wasn't coming in. I wasn't sure if you guys were on the technical well. I think he had she had to computer so much I could get his report and it did like make a noise. Sorry. <laughs> Stay for a couple minutes. There was no day. No, it's always like that. Yeah, it's I can stretch my legs. I love so great. Um, great. So um we have a question for you. <laughs> Kind of me yeah. <laughs> you may or may not know the answer to um about the closure of the of the north um passageway. passageway. I mean I'm aware of you know the announcement was just made, but uh I guess is there a particular question? Yeah, why <laughs> the why? I guess the why is to save money, but that's and the hours too. We've been, yeah, some people are frustrated it's closed on weekends. Others are saying the 6 30 a.m. is just too late for their commute. It's kind of them. Um, and the initial, some of the initial reporting, which we saw in LIRR today, was that it limits um, transferability between the railroads. Um, you know, as an employee and as a consumer, I understand the latter. So, I don't have the answer uh, as to the business decision. I think the jurisdiction would be on top of my head, probably station operations. So I can you know, touch base with Andy and see if there's a, uh, you know, a specific response. I mean, clearly a decision was made, yeah. and you just want to understand the, um, the combination of reasoning and 
sort of, uh, you know, the awareness of the knock-on effect. You know, so obviously I recognize the um, customer from either side, meaning they're coming from Long Island, going to Metro North, or Metro North going to Long Island. Um, and this is a particular path that they would use. Um, you know, and it's closed. And obviously, you know, it, it's the hours are being limited. So I don't know uh, if it was uh, an operation, station operations decision, or a combination of the security personnel. Uh, stuff, so. I know that Mike Stanton um, has uh, uses it as well. And when it was closed, while there were some connectors being made um, to Van Sanko Madison, he was asking when it was going to reopen, and obviously it did. But um, so there are un, there are non transfers too for people who use that that act as yeah. Guess. I mean today's a wet day. The last <laughs> couple of days been wet, so we recognize people who use yeah. our property and uh, cut through passwords. And it's a mall. Uh, yeah, I would never use Grand Central Tunnel as a I don't doubt that there's opportunities to shop and we we'll welcome that. Right? Yeah. I would actually use the, use the word brand central yeah. terminal the word mall at the same time. Right, right. Um, I used the Port Authority bus terminal as a mall when I lived across the street from it because it's indoors and had stuff. But, I also really prepare for courses. No, I won't go on. <laughs> I guess another question about the North Passageway um, closures would be how can we influence change so that um, it, to to extend to could be open uh, so many hours? I mean, in that respect, if you want to go in that direction, I certainly, you know, in your capacities, certainly send that you're probably handy and, and uh, you provide your contacts and your questions and say, hey, you know, we would uh, respectfully ask you know, for a response for question one, two, or three. And uh, our constituents, people who reach out to you, have indicated that it's an interest in uh, keeping the original hours that were said or extending them or whatever request is. And that might be the simplest way that the beacon certainly been routed. Into the correct departments and uh, okay. Sorry, I don't know all the specifics. That's good. That's great. Thank you. Um, another question I would ask you is um, at the last board meeting, um, Bob Malley gave a great presentation on the site selected, the sites selected for um, TOD. Mm -hmm. um, and some of those are in Metro North Territory. Do you want to give a, a, the, the five minute, the five cent tour on what those are and what the, um, what, what not my area. So, I mean, we can ask Robin to, to yeah, the, I guess in the presentation, I mean, I, I Jack's happy to give the presentation too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I saw part of the presentation and um, so I didn't take it in all. Um, I mean, there's been other things and reasons I would be aware of TOD, but I don't know if there was a specific station that you were asking about was in that presentation? No, it was, um, what were there were two sites, right? And well, it was Goldman's Bridge. Goldman's Bridge. Yeah. Oh, sure. yeah. I don't know. No, it was at the end of the Oh, no, I'll board meeting. Um, right, that they were, that there were RFPs out to work for developers. Was it Vernon? Yes. Not Vernon, it's us. It was something. Right. This was it was mentioned because of this is bad. That was West. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, yes. uh, All right. Well, maybe we'll ask Robin to come to a, a future meeting and talk. Robin Holliver. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, certainly reach out to her. She can you know speak to uh, you know past, present, future, future meeting. Yeah. There's obviously uh, ongoing discussions at the state legislature. I, I believe it's executive order. It's uh, even thirty. Yeah, that sounds about right. I happened to see Robin this morning, and that turns out uh, so. You know, she'd be more than happy. I'm sure. Yes. July. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, super. Do, do I have any other questions? Uh, so there's some a writer on line was asking about the reason behind not bringing the quiet parts back post COVID. I know. 
I don't know if the every you know within the organization what the statement they have made is. So I don't know the again the professional meeting. You know, the said no. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it. it I, I, I think the the statement has been at the moment there is no expectation to bring it back. Um, you know, I, I think it stands to reason that it's very difficult to uh, I use the phrase operationalize, meaning you know a conductor has a uh, professional duty as you know certain tasks that they have to accomplish uh, on any revenue ride, and uh, this is if this was added this would be not number one. So number one is obviously safe passage for people to you know get on board and train, safe to sit, um, and obviously revenue collection amongst that process and also helping out and dealing with other you know issues that happen on the um, having to go from one car to another and you know or, uh, track whether and the you know the head car, which is if that was a designated quiet car, make sure they're staying right. in that realm. And I'm talking right now. Is that quiet? Right. Is that not quiet? That's yeah. you know we could all agree or disagree. Another railroad which doesn't even come close to how we do things here in our area shall be a lane mm -hmm. manages mm -hmm. to have a high cost, and it has never been suspended. He would keep it there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think works. I, I think the question, like many things, is even if you brought it back, is it on paper, and is it enforceable? So, are we going to have the knock-on effect of well, you had a quiet car, now you're not enforcing it? You know, I rode the car on, you know, randomly on Tuesday at seven in the morning, and you know, we're not necessarily going to have the trackability to know at that exact moment, you know, was it quiet between 7 a.m. when the doctor was there, but then at 7.15 in the morning, it wasn't quiet? Yeah, I mean, I would say that people are asking for it, and, and a lot of this is self-enforcement. You don't have to have the conductor there with a club watching the people. A lot of the times, somebody starts talking too much, and the other passengers will ask them that they should quiet down. You're in the quiet car. I, I have seen that happen many times. When it doesn't even involve the conductor many times. You could call it the quieter car, the relative. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think it, <laughs> I think the, you know, it, it's, you know, something you can you know, raise up with Andy and say, you know, Andy, is there a particular. We sent, we had sent Kathy a, 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 a letter. Yeah. Um, but. Um, I, I mean, I would say there's probably would be issues with um, people's, people's behavior has changed since COVID and ensuring that there's no. Um, I would tend to agree. Yeah, uh, not, not necessarily for the better. And to make sure that yeah. there's no actions against uh, railroad employees. Well, I think, and that's again, you know, uh, you bring up a point, uh, you know, it, it, the phrase is confrontation, you know. Yeah. And so, you know, how do I, you know, walks through a car and then all of a sudden passenger 43 out of the first 42 are, are generally in compliance that we had a, a place. But number 43 is dismissive and now is quote unquote not, you know, compliant and refusing to comply. And so, you know, it's a, it's a challenge for the, you know, the transportation crews. Uh, you know, they have other obligations and they're already dealing with things, you know, it could be very simply someone's got a bike and the bike is taking up all those seats or, you know, now we're getting into, you know, the summer months almost, people have luggage and luggage is taking up more than one seat. I mean, these are uh, things that we would hope that people would just uh, uh, better manage. I mean, when I order a train, I can't order a train until everyone safely gets off. So the idea of barging through while everyone's trying to exit is just like silly behavior. But does it happen? Of course, you know, I, I ride. We didn't get on a train yesterday because of that. Because you were pulled by the way for someone to get off. <laughs> and the door pulls on his face. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, no. So there's all sorts of. What should happen? And, 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 and you've seen some of the, you know, the marketing and designs, you know, TA campaign, yeah. you know, which is, is trying to address 
um, I guess, call it a quality of life right. like, uh, aspect. And uh, it's, you know, does it move a needle from one to 10? Probably not. But, you know, it's certainly a thing that they're aware of. Uh, you know, they're just completely this past weekend, the most recent uh, MTA customer account survey. I just sort of let out twice. Right. I did. It's like you have already filled this out. <laughs> you know, not, not for you. <laughs> so I mean, I, so I think the the you know the people who receive and obviously do the uh, uh, the information intake from that certainly look at all like, the quality of life issues. I'm sure um, you know, they will take into account if they're saying about you know, quiet card or other things that are potentially systematic problems that you know, they will take that into account and certainly review it further. So. Thank you for that. Do you know when um, that, you may not know, because this is did not even outside of your office, this is completely outside your agency, when the um, adjudication for the summonses goes to TAB instead of um, to, for on, on the railroad to go to Transit Adjudication Bureau instead of to the individual places where the summons is? I don't know the, the process. You're talking about someone who is not paying their fare? And they well, well like, I'm not sure if all summons is. Yeah. Like, if, if somebody does something that's outside the rules of the rules. Just fair. Fair. Just the renovation? At least according to the budget. Okay. Yeah, and then it hit the renovation on the, on the roads. If, um, and instead of if somebody's getting a um, summons for that, you I don't think Metro North has the same IOU system as Long Island Railroad. Yeah, I don't know off the top of my head. But um, the, the Transit Adjudication Bureau is now the repository for um, the summons is entered as opposed to if, if you were in Yonkers and you Yonkers would be where the summons would be okay. to, as opposed to if you were in your town. Gotcha. Uh yes, yeah, so I don't know, you know, the the process and okay. steps. Yeah. And, and you know, you you are you know your you know fare is not collected, there is um pretty exact name hopefully it's an IOU. Okay. But um if someone has uh some other um uh, summons given by, uh, in this case, Barth or the MTAPD. You know, I don't know the steps or process are involved. Sometimes it could be very simply the removed from the train and not given the summons. So it's a different category. But, right. um, I would presume the MTAPD has status and data on that as to what they've done. So, but... We'll catch you all when you see. <laughs> Bob, uh, you have your hand up. Sorry, I've been monopolizing. Uh, no worries. Uh, I have a couple of items that I wanted to bring up. I'm just curious whether um, Metro North has just decided that they don't want to have a quiet car or whether any effort has been put forth to establish something that might work. I am a frequent Amtrak rider and when I get on that train, I know what the quiet car is. The conductor announces it, and you pretty much have an undisturbed trip. So if we wanted to try to make the quiet car work without it being, um, you know, too much effort for the conductor, one would be to have a note on the door, this is the quiet car, have the conductor announce that it is a self-monitored quiet car so that I'm not sitting there asking the conductor to monitor it. It's like when you say this is a self-monitored quiet car, it's like, okay, let's just hope we're respectful enough um, to do that. And I guess the last point on that is maybe reach out to Amtrak and see what their thoughts are that maybe there's something there that we can learn. Moving to another uh, question that I have now that I have your attention. Uh, what's the fine for fare evasion? Because, <clears throat> you know, I feel like if... Yes. The, yes. 
on on subways or on I mean on New York City Transit or on um Metro North on on New York City Transit, which is I think the bigger problem. So that it's uh it's it's changing under the budget, right? It's uh I think a hundred for the first offense. Oh yes, it depends on how many. It depends on how many offenses. Um, or it's up to the, there's some discretion according to, um, per, to the officer who could say, okay, listen, student, you've got an ID and you, you've got your metric card in your pocket, swipe this time and don't do it again. Uh, it could be, you know, it's, in some cases, you know, it's up to the discretion, discretion of the okay. person or um, under the budget, there um, are some some things that will be enacted that will allow somebody to get, a, if it's their first offense, a Metro card, if they pay the fine, a Metro card for half of the money back, or half of the fine back, $50. Yes. Or if yes. they're eligible for fair fares, if they sign up for fair fares, they'll get money back in the form of a fair fares card, right? Okay, yes. well, th those are a lot of options. I just think that if um, an MTA officer arrested one person a day and charged them like $300, that would reduce the amount of, you know, fare evasion because, you know, the risk of having to pay $100, I guess, from my perspective, is so, it's, it's not enough to discourage people from doing that. And my last point is, <clears throat> um, I frequently see, particularly in Grand Central and in many of the subway stops, the MTA police who are there, they're always congregated in a group. I know I was in Grand Central the other day and there were like five M MTA officers there chatting. It's like, is that the most effective way to police? It just seems like they ought to be spread out. And that's just not one time when I see an MTA officer, they typically are in a group chatting. So this, sounds, this sounds like every other council meeting that we have here. Right? <laughs> um, it's, it, it, but it is something that, that is raised frequently. Um, I, I, in, when we talk about our trend in our transit rider council meeting, in fact, Chief Kemper will be at our um, meeting next Thursday for New York City Transit Riders. What we what we were told or when asked is um or what we were told when, when is that it's up to the that they're, they're deployed based on need and we shouldn't question deployment, right? I mean essentially, and that um they are that there's a requirement that there be at least two officers together at a time. That's for their safety. Mm -hmm. um, and we've seen actually that it, instances of why that matters so much. Um, and if, and, and we should, we should uh, stop. Uh, hold on, Maddie, hold on. And we, sh and we shouldn't speculate what they're doing on their phones. It may not be Candy Crush. They may, they, that it is, um, and, you know, that they have NYPD issued phones. That include a lot of information. Um, that might be warrants, might be you know who's, um, what what's occurring in the system and the like. So um, it, it, you are not alone in seeing that. Um, it's something that is frequently raised. And I understand two officers. I get that, but when it's like a party, is uh, something's up. Um, yeah. Yeah, we'll ask. We'll ask. Like, we'll ask again next week. You're welcome to join the meeting. TRC. TRC. Um. Oh, Richard had to go, but oh, right, he's in the tunnels. Um, Maddie, you had uh, you have your hand raised. Um, I just are we up to a new business yet or? Uh, not not quite. Um, okay, just recognize you wanted to see appropriate time. Okay. 
you very much. I'm 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 just a little cut off track. We'll come back, Mitch. <laughs> Your train doesn't even look like it's moving. <laughs> uh, there you go. Smooth ride. <laughs> I took um the I was in Newark Airport and I took the, the train back and it just stopped. Stopped. Your tunnel. Or the tunnel. So I missed my little hammer there. Is that the tunnel? No, it was New Jersey Transit. I that might happens. have done better on the path. Uh, from Newark, you said? Yeah. Yeah, I hung up uh, in, in Northern Jersey for a little bit myself. Yeah. Yeah. I had to go to Rose Pizza, my wounds out. Yeah. <laughs> very discouraged. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, new business. Well, I, I just want to mention that um, under April 24th, the uh, Grand Central Madison. They celebrated the 100th anniversary of the Royal Railroad. Mm -hmm. uh, I was there with the staff came. Um, they all went there and talked about the people. It was a very nice ceremony. It was lovely. Very nice ceremony. They gave us a, a, a member of ticket to a woman who was the company on the Long Island Railroad since 1960. 1960. Every day, almost. She, nice. she was standing the whole time, and it looked to me like she needed to sit down, so I just wanted to put the book on railroad because he could get a chair for her. So he went around and uh, she was doing that. She stood there with everyone. It's been the whole time, all the speeches, and all the, it was very nice. She was probably used to standing in Sparrow Car back in the day. Yeah, that's <laughs> clear. <laughs> so yeah. um, I, I don't have any, uh, anyway, so I, it, this actually is also it is a very nice exhibit of memorabilia. Uh, and I know you guys saw it because the, the ceremony took place right in front of it. Mm -hmm. But if you have time, you got to swipe by the ticket office on the opposite side to see the video. Mm -hmm. They've got a lot of help from some of the real families too. Mm -hmm. but soon we'll be saying that right by the uh, Max. Yeah, that's right. No, I, I don't have any other business. Good question. Does anybody here know? <laughs> When or if the Westchester County bus system is going to convert to the Omni system, because I've had people tell me they won't do the Omni cards because they sometimes ride the Westchester buses and they need to be able to do a transfer or, or to pay the fare. And then you have to have the Metro card to pay the fare. They don't take the Omni card. And I think that's an issue with Nice Bus also. Last time I heard from Nice Bus, they said they hadn't been asked. Um, we are going to. We're going to get an update um, very soon on uh, on Omni, so we'll ask that question. Mm -hmm. Unless Peter, yeah. we will get an update on Monday. Well, okay. Monday is good. Just Monday. Okay. Thank you. Um, looking forward to it. Yeah. Sure. Fire away with questions. Uh, Based on the information they hear on um, yeah. Thanks. Um, Maddie, you have your hand. Thank you, Lise. My question, that's good that Randy pointed out, you know, that uh, someone's been taking the trip since 1960 since Eisenhower and Rockefeller were in charge. Anyway, my question is, in relation to the seats, I'm not sure if this is off topic or not, not. has Ed Day and Steve Newhouse appointed uh, uh, members yet, um, recommended new members for the Orange and Rockland seats for he's held on to by Frank Borelli and Harry Poor. Uh, the, the word I have is that the nominee, the recommendations have been sent from uh, from County to the governor's office. Both by Day and Newhouse, correct? No, just by um, well, uh, Ed Day. Uh, nothing is happening in Orange County right now. Oh, okay. That's with Frank Borelli. Thank you very much. The is being held up there because there's a uh, they're waiting for Richard a bus test. Right, Richard is yeah. there. Richard? Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. See you next week. I'm at Dave's guy. Right. What's that? Anyway, so. It's at Dave's guy. Is that Dave? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that your 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 appoint your appointment is being held up by the fact that they need what they are requiring one more Westchester County person. That's to the to the council as yeah, opposed to the council. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, is there any other new business? Okay. Sure. We'll just, any old we'll business? All right. So what's with that? Right. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Uh, PCAC is on June the. June 6th, June 6th, and we have two speakers. Yes. Um, Please attend. We have, uh, uh, we are, we are finalizing the, the speakers. We have the, well, the, the IG um, will be our first speaker, um, Daniel Court, who joined last year uh, and is very excited to come speak with us. And we are finalizing Sam Schwartz, who will come and speak with us as well. Uh, in advance of congestion pricing implementation. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Good, Good day. Day. See you next week. Bye, Maddie. Bye. Thank you.